What's up, C3? Welcome to the quarantine kitchen of 2020. Yep, 2020, that's what year it is. Nice job, had to check your watch for that. Uh, yep. So I'm here, this is Luke, I'm Peyton, and I know what you may be thinking, that we don't know that much about cooking, but you should know this, Luke and his fiance watch Great British Baking Show a lot. And I spent my entire sophomore year of college in biology class watching Chopped, closed captions mm, in the back. Shout out Mr. Wilson. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wilson, hope you're doing okay if you watch this when it goes viral. He got hit by a FedEx truck on his bike in the middle of the year. We were out of class for a week. Don't worry, he came back. He just walks with a limp now. That's a true story. But I learned a lot while watching that show. And none of that matters. So today we're actually going to be making some ramen. Crusted chicken. We know y'all have baby. ramen in your in your pantries. So we're gonna we're gonna show you the steps. We're gonna have some some mac and cheese, 50 cents at Walmart, uh, and some. So we're gotta be healthy. So we're gonna have some mushrooms and asparagus. That's right. And Peyton's gonna be searing that up for us. So we're just gonna go through the steps. And if it tastes horrible, Luke Harper gets to eat it. So we got our chicken. It looks nice. Not really. It's chicken tenders. Um, we're gonna have flour, egg, and then our ramen crust. So Ooh. let me get the eggs going. No shells, please. So Luke, where where can you buy ramen from? Um, honestly, anywhere with a cash register. I think they sell it everywhere. Okay, okay. I just wanted to double check. <laughs> you just <laughs> shot, you just some shot milk egg onto all the couch. Over. I have to tell Meredith about that one later. All right, so we're gonna get that. Let's whisk it up. Okay. Nice. Yep. Oh yeah. Actually, Peyton, you want to whisk that for me? Oh, I'd love to. And then for the flour, so you want to get a nice breading on the flour. It's going to start, we have all-purpose flour. I'm actually going to put a little bread flour in there too because I don't have enough all-purpose flour. Yeah. It doesn't really matter. There's a little bit more gluten in the bread flour, but I don't actually know what that means. So there we go. It's all white. It mixes in well. Yeah, I don't, I don't mean to brag, but my dad told me to whisk eggs when I was eight years old. That's Mississippi stuff right there, guys. Wow. So got our bread in our bowl. The best thing to do here is you want to season a little bit of everything. So we're going to put a little salt. Don't want a bland chicken. A little salt in the egg. A little salt in the ramen. And then This is not a low sodium meal. No, but we're not using these things, so it's way better. And I like to put a little spice, so we're going to go with okay. some Mike seasoning. You can get this once a year at the Tawny Town Grape Festival. I'm a big fan of that. Yeah, spice it so up. So we're gonna thing. put a little bit in our egg, a little bit in all three, and we'll mix that up. If you can whisk that in, <laughs> if you can whisk that in. Oh, I'm go. sorry. I was mes I was mesmerized by your ability to throw spices in a bowl. All right. Now we're gonna just start dipping, and then we'll get our pan going. Peyton's gonna get our our sides going for us. It's gonna be great. I hope it tastes well. I mean, we'll we'll just find out. All right, here we go. We're gonna get this chicken going. Basically, got some tongs. I'm gonna dip it, get a nice coating in the flour, a nice coating in the egg, and then we're gonna coat it in ramen, and then we're actually gonna chill it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. So, here's an example. Get a nice coating, cover that up a little oh, bit. Nice, Maybe. yeah, toss that thing. Yeah, now you're in the egg. Nice, but you wanna let it drip a little bit because you don't want too much egg on there or else all your stuff's gonna fall off. Yeah, every yeah, of course. That's 101. There we go. Nice coating on there. Look at that. Wow. Okay, here we go. And then we're gonna do another you, one. You were excited about that piece. I was. I'm I'm hungry. I didn't eat breakfast. Oh, that's not that's not good. There we go. Nice coating. Even coating. That way your chicken cooks nice. These evenly. Great. This is just chicken tenderloins from Walmart. Honestly, I think this whole meal is like 
a little over ten dollars but it makes four meals so you're, you're looking at a good budget right now so tell your mom cook for your family they'll be proud of you and a lot of these things are things you can find it probably in your house already so you probably won't have to go to the store too much uh, you want to keep our exposure minimal to the Rona out there. That's a good point. Wear your face mask, or if you're like me, just put your put your nose under your collar, and then you everyone will look at you funny. All right, so these are done. A little bit messy, but that's okay. We're gonna go into the fridge, and Peyton, you lead us off with our veggies. What's up, guys? Kind of, it's kind of ironic that I'm doing the vegetables. I didn't eat vegetables for the first 22 years of my life. I'm 23. Um, and so we're going to start eating this asparagus, which I started eating last year. So we're going to prepare asparagus and mushrooms. Mushrooms, a controversial mm -hmm. vegetable. Not, also mm -hmm. not technically a vegetable, but we're going to make these. I'm going to show you how to make these things. It's going to be simple. It's going to taste good, but there are a couple things you have to do first. First, you got to trim your asparagus, right? You want to trim the bottoms off. You don't want to, you don't want to eat these bottoms here. Now, mm -hmm. asparagus, kind of a neutral smell right now. The second time, though, you know, li liquid form, you know what I'm talking about. Oh, not, I know what you're talking about, Peyton. Not, oh, not me. great. So you might want to be careful. You might want to do Luke's nose yeah. trick when you go that, to the bathroom after this meal. That works in a lot of scenarios. I've been, using, I've been using this trick for years for different reasons. Oh. You know you know what I mean. All right, so we're going to trim the bottoms here, guys. We're just going to do a, a few at a time here. So we're just going to do about the bottom third off of them. Bottom fourth, bottom Get third. Get them out of here. You don't want those. Those are not going to help anything taste good. Gosh. Okay, LeBron James in the kitchen. Just slam dunking our trash can. So we're going to keep okay, doing this, guys. I'm going to be honest. I never knew. I didn't know you were supposed to do this. My mom told me you're supposed to trim the bottoms off about six months ago. But the, the good news. <laughs> You've been eating the bottoms your whole life? No, no. The, well, I only started eating them a year ago. But the good news is. The good news is I like the tops the best, so I only eat like the top half anyway. So I've been safe. The, that, that's a great example of how the Lord fights for you in the kitchen as well, all right? He kept me from eating. All right, so you're going to take these, throw those away from oh, me, yes, trash man. Get so now there. we've got our asparagus ready. Ooh. That's about as much prep as you can do. Now you can do these in on the stove or you can do them in the oven. We're going to do them on the stove today for the purposes of what we're doing. A lot of times when you do them in the oven, you can drizzle them in oil, top them with different things. We're just going to lightly season them uh, today. And so I'm going to get my, my pan heating up real quick. Fading your, your water's um, kind And of while I was, <laughs> I, I got an eye on the water. Okay. <laughs> While, while I was trimming, while I was trimming the vegetables, as you as you guys can see, me and Luke are very different in the Ooh. kitchen. But as I was trimming the vegetables, I had my water boiling because we're also gonna do a savory classic, mac and cheese. I know you guys all like mac and cheese. Now the great thing about mac and cheese, really cheap, great. Don't go for the craft, okay? Let me tell you something. Here's mm. a here's a trade secret. Great value, the exact same. Now this is super easy. So I've got my water boiling. So what I'm gonna do. Is I'm going to take this, I'm going to throw these noodles in my boiling water. You're going to boil that for about seven to eight minutes. Super simple. You're going to take it out, strain those. We'll do all that later. We'll add in uh, things after that. So I'm going to go ahead. Go ahead and dump those in there. All right, now we've got that boiling. We've got our other pan mm. um, oh. heating up. There you go, Okay, You'll want this. Yeah, you're going to you're gonna want this, this tool right here. There you go. Get a close-up. Yeah, you're going to need that right that there so through. that you can stir your mac and cheese. Mm -hmm. You're going to stir it every few minutes. Uh, I didn't know that until I read the box, but I know now. So we're going to stir this mac and cheese. I'll, I don't think it makes a difference, but I'm just following the instructions here. And He's so we're going to stir that. water everywhere right now. It's, it's just, you, you threw egg on the couch. Yeah, I'll have to tell Meredith. We're going to, we're going to have to have roommate conflict resolution after this video. Uh, but, and so we're going to do that, and so now I want to talk to you guys about how we're going to cook the asparagus and the mushrooms. And so, super easy. I've got my pan heating up. As soon as it gets done heating up, I'm going to throw some minced garlic in there. Most of your moms should have minced garlic. It's a kitchen essential. Now, all, most of the things I'm going to season this with, they aren't necessary to season it. But if you want it to taste good, you're probably going to want to use these things. We're just going to be using minced garlic butter, salt, and pepper. Mm. And so I'm gonna get that pan heating up. I'm gonna go ahead, this is my oil, which is extra virgin olive oil. Uh, good stuff, you get it from the store, like the rest of these things. 
I'll go ahead and throw my oil in there. There's a lot of oil, not gonna lie. May have been too much. <laughs> Forgot how much oil I put in the bowl. Nice. But, uh, but that's okay, we're gonna get that around. I'm actually gonna dump a little bit out in the sink. It's a good technique, right there. And so we've got our macaroni boiling. It, well, it's like a 50-50 shot that boils over, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, and if, if it does, we'll, uh, we'll improvise, don't worry. I've, I've boiled over several things in my life, don't worry. It, it's happened in the chopped kitchen before too. And so I feel, feel pretty calm in situations like that. But anyway, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take our asparagus and our mushrooms and we're gonna go ahead and take them over here. Yeah, excuse me, because the chicken is done. And this is what we're all here for, right? Not the veggies. Just kidding, those are good, those are good too. So this has been chilling for 30 minutes. As you can see, I changed the plate and it's gonna be great. So we're gonna actually gonna come over to our, our hot skillet. We got some nice canola oil. This is like 67 cents, so that's good. Not great for you, but it tastes good. And my tongs are gone. I'll take new tongs. The thing you wanna do is you wanna put just a, a quarter of an inch of oil in the bottom of the pan, and then you wanna take some of your crummies We'll take it off the chicken. Did you just call those crummies? Yeah, your ramen crumbs. I don't know, I beat them with a, a stick earlier and they're crummies now. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna put some of them in the oil and when they sizzle, if they rise to the top, that means your oil's done and they ain't sizzling right now. So I'm gonna get going. Basically, we're gonna put our chicken in. You don't wanna overcrowd your pan. The pan, you wanna, four tenders, depending on how, size, how, how big your pan is, four tenders should be good. So I'm gonna put them in. They're gonna be hot. This is why I have an apron on, because a lot of grease is about to pop out. Now, let me get those in. It's gonna be one to two minutes on each side, and then you flip them. And then when they get a nice golden brown, they'll be good to go. And hopefully by that time, our sides are done, and we'll be ready to eat. All right, I'm just gonna wait. All right, guys. We're throwing the asparagus in there. You don't want to put too much. You don't want to, like he was saying, you don't want to overcrowd the pan. And so we've got some of our asparagus in there. The key to sauteing is you want to do it on a higher heat. Most people, a lot of people do it on medium. You want to go a little bit higher than that because you want the moisture in the food to evaporate a little faster so you get a nice crust on the outside. Y'all didn't know I was about to drop some knowledge on y'all, did it? Did it, yeah. So the chicken's looking good. I'm actually gonna give it a flip. It's looking nice and brown. Don't burn myself. Oh, the chicken's swimming, hold on. It smells amazing. Honestly, it does. I didn't even know, oh, it's a little brown. All right, a little dark, a little dark. I should've flipped earlier. Oh, dude, that, that's perfect. Look at that. That's that, that's that southern ramen. Your whole body's gotta move with it when you flip. All right, it's looking good. Basically, when that when those those crisp up real nice, you can be confident that the chicken's well cooked. But you also want to give it a little cut to make sure you're not feeding raw chicken to your guests. And I got this nice tray set out, basically just a drying rack. You can put cookies on it, but right now we're gonna put chicken. We got some paper towels under just so to catch the dripping of the grease. And we should be done here in a second. Now while that's finishing up, we're actually gonna get our plates ready. Plating is a big deal. A nice plating goes a long way with your guests. Yeah, I've, I've been told that plating separates the amateurs from the pros. That is true. All right, our chicken is done. I'm getting it out, let it dry a little bit. This, this drying rack lets the air circulate under it, so you get a nice crisp, crisp chicken all the way around. I'm gonna be honest, this looks delicious. And while that's going, we're gonna to go to our last piece of our meal, which is actually gonna be our special sauce. This is like the old saying of everything but the kitchen sink. We're gonna do everything but the fridge, and it is really smoky in my apartment. I think the fire alarm might go off, but that's okay. So what yeah. I took, I just- I'll have to sacrifice my apron. Luke, if the fire alarm goes off, you're gonna to wanna to wave that at it. All right, well, we'll see if that happens. Basically, I just went to the fridge door, and I just took out a bunch of ingredients, and I'm gonna make a spicy honey mustard. So what that includes is some, some light mayonnaise, Hellman's, not, not the other stuff. Uh, we got some yellow mustard, tapatio, some good hot sauce, and then my leftover honey. I didn't have much left. But we're gonna put that in a bowl, we're gonna mix it up. You basically want equal parts of everything except for the hot sauce. That'll just be a, a little bit. 
You get some mayo. This isn't the healthiest sauce, but that's okay. You're not having too much of it. And this will be great with the chicken. Get some mustard in there. And then we got our tapatio, just a, just a little bit. There we go. And then drizzle that honey on there. And I know this is kind of oh gross gosh. separately. What'd you do? Just keep going. All right, we're good. So I'm gonna mix this all together. And it's actually gonna make a really nice honey mustard. And Look while, at that. Wow. While he's doing that, I want to show you our, our finished asparagus. Wow. And so what you want with your asparagus, it's going to start turning bright green in the pan and the tips are going to get a little dark. And you can see some of the some of the minced garlic starts to brown on the outside of it. That's how you know that it's about to be done. And so you're going to get that. It's going to be bright green. I'm going to set that aside on the plate. Now we're going to go ahead and do our mushrooms. We're going to throw those in the pan. With mushrooms, I'm going to cook these with some butter as well. It's going to help mm. flavor and brown them a little bit more. Nice. Let's let's try this this sauce. I wash my hands, so it's not dirty. Honestly, that's pretty good. Watch out, Chick Fil A. That's not bad. Also, I like how you use the uh, the green plate for your green asparagus. Color coordinating. Yeah, I I planned that yesterday. All right, well, he's getting that. I'm going to start the plating process. I got some honey mustard on my plate. My bad. That's what aprons are for. So, I'm going to start with the chicken because that's the first thing that's done. But there's no science to it. Get a nice, maybe a nice stack going. Oh, that's nice. Mm. I'm not going to use my hand. I'll use my tongue. There we go. Wow. Look at that. Get those extra crumbs out of the way. Make it look pretty. And then, Peyton, can I use your asparagus to start plating? Please, please do. I didn't cook it for no reason. There you go. Get a nice bed of asparagus, and then we're gonna top it with our mushrooms, and then we're gonna leave a little bit of room. Oh, I made it dirty. That's okay. And then we're gonna leave a little room for our, oh. uh, our mac and cheese as well. Oh, these are nice and tender. Well done, Peyton. All right. Ah, I'm throwing mushrooms everywhere. Oh boy. But I'm gonna untuck my shirt. But once you've got these mushrooms going, I'm gonna leave those there for a second. I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, finishing up the macaroni. And so it's been boiling. We're gonna go ahead, we're gonna flip that off. And then you're gonna need a colander or some way to, sh to drain the water out. And so we're gonna do that in my sink. Colanders are also great for holding vegetables and grapes. I put my grapes in colanders all the time. How's it look? I have no idea the quality of these noodles right now. They might be overcooked, but that's okay. Oh, no, it feels great. Do we want to drizzle our, our sauce or do we want to leave it as a dipping sauce? I think, I think drizzle. I think drizzle. Drizzle it is. Let me get a nice mix again. Make sure it's... Y'all, this is gonna be good. The tapatio is a nice touch. You can put any hot sauce that you got in your fridge. It's gonna go a long way. If I mess this up, I'm sorry. I missed. <laughs> there we go. Oh, a little zip. All right, it's not runny, so there we go. Just nice and coat the chicken. Whoa, that was a good drizzle. This is a lot harder than it looks. I don't even know if it looks easy. It might look hard. All right, that didn't go well, but so, I made uh, room for you. Yeah, it looks great. So we're going to call an audible with the mushrooms. We're going to season it a little different. Got some Grill Mates McCormick roasted garlic and herb. Mm. Going to sprinkle that a little bit in there. Just flavor those real quick. Just turn my oil off. You probably should have done that way sooner because that is a fire hazard. You want me to put the cheese in the in the mac? Yeah, if you want to go ahead and throw on the mac and cheese here, throw a little bit of a, a little bit of milk in there. So with the macaroni, you want to put a little bit of milk in there. That's just going to help make the cheese really creamy. Here are our mushrooms. They're just about done. I'm going to brown them just a little bit more. You want them super, kind of kind of real, real brown. They'll start off kind of whitish and pale. You want to brown those real good, season them. That's what the butter and garlic is going to help do. All right, now we got mac and cheese. I hope this pot doesn't burn our fake granite. Cali Cosby thought this was real granite. That's embarrassing. I'm gonna be honest, this does not look very cheesy, but 
Peyton made it. So, there's that. I, I just got some noodles on our plate. They weren't ready for that. We weren't ready for that. Oh. Where's the cheese? The cheese is gone. <laughs> no, like, it, it, that's not cheesy. Uh, I'm going to be honest. This is what happens when you do great If you run out of cheese, you just, everyone's got a little extra cheese in the fridge. You just, just use that. All right. Fiesta blend. Yeah, that's my taco. That's my taco cheese. Please use it sparingly. All right, this is what happens. A lot of times, the cheese just needs some time to solidify, where you don't really notice it. But I put more noodles on my plate, and they're not ready for that. Look at that. It's looking There's better. A lot it's of looking here. worse. Yeah, we need a gas mask in here. All right, guys. Help so with COVID and. We got Luke Harper over here just got lost our, in smoke. Got our mushrooms nice and nice and tender. I Ooh. think they're gonna be good to go. Get them on there. Uh, normally with my mushrooms, I would have cut them up a little bit more. These are in pretty big chunks. You don't have to do that, but normally it helps cook them a little bit faster, makes them a little more bite size, especially if you're ever gonna use it to top uh, to top them on any sort of meat, steak, beef, any sort of thing like that. But we're gonna go ahead and plate these a little bit. Do you leave, do you, leave me some do, room? Do you trust me to do this? Yeah. Okay. That's good. That's good. It's a good amount right there. And y'all, let me just remind you, this all equals out, as in serving size, to about a little over $4 per meal, which is kind of nice. Really helpful on the budget. And then we're going to finish it off. Dirty the plate up there a little bit. Let me cover it up. Let little street up. marks on the plate, you know what I mean? Get us some mac. <laughs> oh, don't want those. Get us some mac and cheese in uh, the corner of the plate. And there we go! Look at that! There is our Come finished on, meal. Baby. The kitchen is a mess, and that's okay. But I, hey, I, a lot, a that. lot of smoke. Look at that. Wow! A lot of smoke. Let, hold on. Finishing touch. You gotta. I learned this on the Food Network. You gotta wipe the plate down. You don't want any skid mark. Oh, sorry, chicken. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Nice. This is this nice. is not how they do it on the British baking show. No. That's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Hey, this is this is straight American cooking. Come on! That's right. Yeah, great. That looks hey, good. Anybody in Great Britain wa watching, we want you for a third time. That's yeah. right. We'll go to war anytime. You don't want this problem. Yeah. That's right. We're calling you out, Great Britain. What's up? Whoa, What's up? Whoa. <laughs> you don't want you didn't want to call out a whole country? <laughs> not really. But that's okay. I'm not scared. Thank you for joining us in our apartment with the quarantine kitchen of 2020. My name's Luke. This is Peyton. I also want to give a quick shout out oh, to yeah. Madison, Mississippi, the 601, oh, uh, born and bred. Okay. Just, just the people they made, the people that made me. Oh, that's true. Okay. This might be my only chance for fame. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Well, hey, it's been a blast. We hope y'all learned a little bit something, or maybe you just learned what not to do. But either way, don't set your apartment on fire, and ask your parents before you use a stove. This is a great meal, only $4 per, per serving. That's pretty good for the budget. Hey, we've enjoyed it. Y'all have a great day.